You're welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. Well, as they say, the morning makes the day. As we link up with Arise Abuja Studios to have a conversation with Awa Musa Rafsanjani, who is a development activist who earlier this month led a coalition of Nigerian civil society organizations to Washington, D.C., United States, to protest against plans by the federal government to go a borrowing again, despite unfavorable economic indicators at home. Good morning, Awa. Good to have you again. All right, good morning. Good to be back with you. Yes, I can hear you very well. All right, thank you. Yes, thank you. Okay, all right, let's dive straight into it. You are in Washington, D.C., uh, for the World Bank IMF uh, meetings, and you practically staged a protest. Uh, your intentions were clear. Uh, Nigeria cannot afford additional borrowings. But then the argument from government is that as long as Nigeria is able to pay back and our development rests solely on borrowing, they will still have to proceed. Tell us, why did you have to go uh, through that route in Washington, D.C., and how bad are things in terms of our exposure, you know, to facilities locally and internationally. Thank you very much. Um, yearly, each time uh, IMF World Bank is having its uh, meetings, civil society across the world, they meet to discuss um, state of um, financing, looking at individual countries and even the region generally. So this year, uh, we also met and um, we actually had meeting with the directors of IMF um, World Bank in Washington, D.C. Uh, this was just a select meeting of uh, African civil society leaders, which we actually do routinely with them to discuss our concern, especially the lack of transparency uh, in the management of our resources in Africa and the role that the IMF World Bank are playing. So it was an opportunity to actually have, you know, a direct conversation with them to express our concern and to also find out what they are actually doing with our government. Uh, this is because Nigerian government in particular uh, is not interested in discussing with the non-state actors, particularly civil society organizations, um, on the state of the economy and also giving them opportunity to discuss or suggest ways in which the economy can be uh, improved. And also particularly with regard to the issues of um, this reckless debt borrowing. So since the Nigerian government, for example, is not able to give the space for civil society to discuss and um, know what they are actually doing with our nation's resources and also the money they are borrowing, we felt that it is necessary that the IMF do uh, inform uh, nationalities of uh, Africa to know what their countries is doing with them. Ideally, the in countries or the countries in Africa, country leaders should be able to be having kind of a round discussion or round table, you know, uh, with the various civil society or state actors as non state actors that are interested in the financial management in the country. But since they are not interested to uh, be more transparent and inform the public, you know, through the civil society, what they are actually doing and when they borrow money, what they are doing, the money beyond just the official statement. So we felt that it is necessary, the IMF has obligation to let uh, us know what our country is doing with them. So they obliged. And they've been discussing this with us, especially uh, during the COVID. One, we wrote letter to the IMF, you know, expressing concern about the debt that Nigeria or the loan that Nigeria was going to take. And the IMF really responded. In that letter, we stated clearly our concern uh, about the need for the loan to be um, attached with transparency in the spending and also clearly spelling out uh, procurement emergency and ensuring that also there will be safe reporting for the civil society and the journalists on how the money is going to be utilized. Another issue, they responded. Nigerian government did not even bother to respond to uh, our concern. So the $3.4 that was collected for the COVID palliative 
uh, you saw how it ended up. We predicted that there might be a problem because of the inflow of uh, money that was going to come. There might not be transparency in the spending, and exactly that was what happened. You could see that some of the politicians, uh, even the palliative, you know, uh, for the COVID, they store it in their own homes and their own private uh, uh, stores. So Nigerians were not given that, and in fact, we were even told, even children who were in school at that time, who were told that they were feeding them with a huge amount of billions uh, of naira. So that's how that money also went. And other loans that Nigerian government are collecting, which is clearly uh, deviating even from the uh, legal framework on how Nigeria should borrow money, we have Fiscal Responsibility um, Act, which clearly states how loans are going to be, or how loans are going to be um, borrowed and managed. But in all honesty, this has not met the necessary requirement what is supposed to comply with the, uh, you know, with the debt management uh, fiscal regulation in the country. That has not been happening. We also see that there's lack, there's total lack of transparency in the way and manner in which you know, those loans were taken. We have also seen that there's a total poor legislative oversight from the National Assembly. And, you know, uh, even the fact that there was, there's no any public audit on the debt that are being taken. This is a huge concern and this is a deviation from even the law that allows the Nigerian government to borrow money. Secondly, we have seen also the recklessness at which when these loans are collected that are even mismanaged. The loans are supposed to be used for development and they are supposed to pay back. But what we see is that some people sit down, eat this money or mismanage this money as we have seen a lot of it you know, happening both at local and national debt that are being taken, whether it is the pony loan, whether it is the national uh, loan. Thirdly, we have seen that our entire revenue that we are getting, almost 90% of it is going into debt servicing. Debt servicing. This is a huge concern because you are actually mortgaging even the entire uh, nation future and we cannot continue to do this because when the loans are collected and they are not put to the appropriate use which can help you know bring development and help bring human capital development in the country it must be a concern to any serious person because the debt profiling is such a reckless and scandalous one that is happening. Every minute you rise up and you go and borrow money. And the worst part of it is that you have even gone to commercial banks where the interest rate is very high. And, you know, we are just, you know, uh, taking these loans, taking these loans without concrete, you know, outcome or output from those loans. That is why civil society organizations have been very, very worried and concerned. So during the spring meeting at the World Bank, you know, IMF meeting, after meeting with the executive directors of the IMF World Bank, we also had, you know, a kind of a, a discussion and we met with other, you know, uh, nationals, other civil society organizations and media to discuss and express worries and concern and condemn in totality the, you know, a sexist use of our public funds in the name of borrowing money to go and be doing things that are not profitable, that will not bring about development in the country. Recently, again, we have seen how Nigerian government is borrowing or had borrowed 800 million US dollars in the name of palliative for the uh, removal of the subsidy. First and foremost, part of the reason why civil society are against this you know, excessive borrowing is because you cannot be borrowing to go and finance subsidy fraud. Everybody knows in this country, including President Mahmoud Buhari, knows that subsidy, the one that we are paying in the last 10 years, is completely nothing but fraud. Because you borrow this money, you inject it you know, uh, in the name of payment of subsidy. One Nigerian they didn't see any subsidy. I grew up in Kano, like I've always said, I, you know, I have I've seen uh, in the last 30 years, hardly you go to any filling station, you buy you know, official uh, pure. It is always black market. 
they have made it impossible for Nigerians to have this pure. And why then borrowing it, you know, uh, almost uh, injecting large number of our budget to finance this pure subsidy, which nobody is seeing any subsidy. So we insist that instead of paying this dubious money, why can't we inject it into the development? So it's part of what we have also, you know, raised with uh, IMF. But luckily, even the IMF themselves, they are also worried and concerned that uh, this subsidy regime is not sustainable and uh, because it is also not being run in a very transparent manner, it could be a concern. And we are therefore uh, insisting that Nigerian government must not and cannot continue with this thing. So to say you are borrowing 800 million to mitigate the effect of uh, subsidy removal without having any clear transparent framework on how to monitor and how to ensure that this money is going to go into the right persons. This is also going to be another potential fraud that is, that is going to happen because in the past we have seen how such kind of um, so-called palliative did not go well and did not get the appropriate and the correct poor Nigerians who are supposed to benefit, whose this borrowing was done in their name. Now, this 800 million, because there's no any legal framework, there's no any transparent process, there's no any you know, uh, measure to account for how this money is going to be shared, we express worry and concern that it may also likely go the same way. So therefore, uh, it is important that as civil society, as non-state actors, as patriotic Nigerians, we should be worried and concerned with the way and manner in which public officials are you know, uh, mismanaging uh, our uh, debt profile in Nigeria and also using those loans which they are supposed to use it for development so that development can pay back uh, those loans. But that is not happening. That's not what is happening now. Uh, it is a very big threat that we are facing because we are even, this reckless borrowing is even mortgaging the sovereignty of Nigeria that, and its asset. So it is not something that we should keep quiet if we have the way and manner in which we can speak so that things can be you know, corrected. But this, um, incoming, this, government, this government is going with all this you know, uh, unfair debt profiling on Nigeria and Nigerians. They are living and they are not bothered. And only two months, less than two months for them to go, they are now borrowing more money. Why this borrowing? Why can't you be more proactive to improve the processes of ensuring that you even reform the tax regime in the country? Why can't you also be you know, more transparent in the way and manner in which you borrow and spend this money? Why can't you be more innovative to increase the revenue for the nation so that all this you know, um, borrowing can actually stop? Because right. if you block the money that is being stolen in Nigeria, you would have reduced all this unnecessary burden for borrowing. Mr. Anwal, you've mentioned a couple of um, issues, burning issues in your response as to why your uh, group, uh, you know, took its uh, protest against uh, external uh, borrowings in Washington, D.C. You've mentioned, you know, accountability and the way uh, the federal government goes about debt servicing. You also were about to highlight um, what the incoming government will be inheriting, which I'd like for you to touch more on. And I'd like for you to also touch more on the immediate steps, um, you know, uh, the incoming government uh, could take to forestall uh, further depreciation in our uh, GDP. Thank you very much. I think, you know, it is absolutely necessary, like we said during the uh, meeting we had in Washington, D.C., with the... Uh, you know, uh, some group of uh, activists and also uh, journalists, we said that the incoming administration, when they come in, they must prioritize and have, you know, um, profound economic policy in the country that can mitigate the unfair poverty that has been created in the country. Secondly, we have also uh, suggest to the incoming administration that they must have efficient and competent economic management team in place that can be settled with looking and reviewing, you know, various programs and policies of government 
uh, in terms of the economy, we must ensure that the economic management team are uh, comprising of people you know, who are experts, who also will have the opportunity or will have the leverage to be able to suggest concrete measures that can salvage our economy. We have also you know, uh, said that the inconsistency in the monetary policies in the country must be addressed. The kind of uh, inconsistency and recklessness in which our you know, central bank run the nation you know, uh, is not acceptable and it must be uh, reviewed. We have also suggested that uh, the incoming administration must improve on the revenue drive. We have also suggested that the incoming administration must make sure that uh, the illicit financial flow and money laundry that is making this country to be a laughing nation must be stopped. We cannot afford to be losing these huge billions of dollars to the illicit financial flow or to the money laundry that people are just stealing from one local government to another, from one state to another, and at the federal level. It's like they say, you know, democratization of stealing and looting of public funds in Nigeria. We say that the incoming administration must do everything possible to block those, those leakages. Otherwise, they cannot even run the government. The debt profiling that we have accumulated so far, both at national and the state level, both local loans and international uh, loan that we have taken, this incoming administration cannot effectively perform. They cannot be able to go anywhere because the country is already crippled with this unfair debt, you know, profiling and, you know, uh, monumental corruption that has undermined the effectiveness of the economy. We also suggested to this new administration that will come that the ease of doing business must be consolidated because if you continue to have a policy that will not encourage the investors to come because of corruption, then nobody is going to come and invest in Nigeria. So the infrastructure that is needed for the investors to come, which is um, power, must also be given priority because if you do not have power, not only international investors will not come, even the small scale businesses and medium scale businesses are already dying and crippling because of lack of power and other infrastructure. There's no way you can continue with this. Then when you look at the, uh, the shameless act of what they call oil theft, there's no way this new administration will come with this kind of shameless oil theft which is only happening in Nigeria. Nigeria appears to be the only country in the world where you are having almost you know, a pre- or legalized oil theft. We could not even meet with OPEC quota given to Nigeria because of this so-called oil theft. And Nigerian government is not able to deal with people who are involved in this. So the new administration cannot survive with this kind of... Uh, well, if that is going, you know. So we mentioned a number of policy issues and reforms that the incoming administration must give priority to, re, you know, revive the economy because the recess that we have been entering, you know, in this country and the poverty, which Nigeria is now tagged as capital of poverty in Nigeria, despite the human and, you know, natural resources that God has, you know, given to this nation, you have one chance leaders that have over years undermined the economic effectiveness of the country, that have increased artificial poverty, that has made corruption to be a way of life, that has made impunity to be something that is encouraging and that can be done and performed without sanction. This has to happen. In the last 10 years, Nigeria and Nigerians will have witnessed increase in um, what we call financial recklessness. We, we have Auditor General who every year will come up with observation on how government institutions and agencies are not you know, uh, respecting or are not 
you know, uh, spending in accordance with our financial regulation, and nothing is happening to them. Nothing is happening despite all these issues. So we want the new administration to ensure that uh, the Auditor General Office is also empowered and strengthened. But more importantly, the legislature, which is elected to help ensure that you know, government program and policies are properly scrutinized and complied with, must rise up to first and foremost educate themselves about the, uh, about the financial institutions, including even this international um, financial institution that are borrowing money to Nigeria. They must understand how they work and they must be patriotic to object to any unfair yes, or unreasonable borrowing that the country wants to do. I'd like to just come in here very quickly. We have a, a little time left. Now, concern that little to no attention has been given to the debt crisis in the country. We know that CISLAC, in partnership with uh, the Christian Aid in Nigeria, initiated a one-year research with a view to finding a solution to the debt solution with a focus on the government's fiscal strength and the ability to respond to socioeconomic emergencies. Now, records from both national and international financial and debt institutions regarding Nigeria's uh, debt reveal this deep crisis. So what other findings from that have you been, uh, have, have other findings did you get from that research? And besides the uh, policy options that you believe should be implemented for addressing the debt emergency, how can the lack of transparency on lending and borrowing and the inability to track those funds itself be fixed? Uh, the way it can be fixed is when you have proactive, you know, uh, legislature. When legislators are doing their work, they will be will be able to have effective oversight that will ensure that uh, government, you know, uh, spending are done according to our laws, and that you know um, issues around the public procurement is strengthened. Issues around fiscal, uh, you know, regime in the country is also uh, addressed and reformed. Uh, increase in transparency and accountability on the management of uh, loans are uh, also increased. This is the only way in which you could help to ensure that uh, you reverse the situation. You have to play more efforts to ensure that uh, more revenue and tax you know, appropriate taxation is done. You have to ensure that um, uh, the tax agencies, you know, uh, the agency responsible for revenue mobilization in this country, uh, federal, federal revenue is actually, in fact, we have to carry out a reform in some of these institutions, you know, in order to salvage the economy. Because when people continue to do things with the impunity and disregard of the law that set them to operate, it's a huge challenge. We cannot, Nigeria cannot continue with this kind of analog people who did not, who are anti actually people in the policy practice they do and who did not other, also care about transparency despite the fact that Nigeria is committed to various international, you know, um, uh, framework like uh, Open Government Partnership, OGP, which clearly, you know, uh, encourages the government to be more transparent. We are also, you know, uh, you know, uh, practicing EITI, and with the EITI, it is expected that revenue, extractive you know, uh, revenue mobilization supposed to be done in a very transparent and accountable manner. Till today, a lot of issues, despite even the fact that we have passed petroleum industry law in this country, it has not even effectively taken up. So there's no way you can improve on your you know, uh, financial institutions you know, uh, situation and also debt profiling as well as revenue leakages if you are not able to carry out a very progressive, proper reforms that can deal with these issues as, you know, decisively. That is what you know, we stand for and that's what we are calling the in, you know, uh, incoming administration to focus on. We all cannot right. allow Nigerians to be dying in their own motherland with all the resources that God has given it to us. Well, all right. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Rafsanjani, for your insight on The Morning Show.